Hi there and welcome to another Fishing Planet video. This is the follow-up to the previous trophy trout. This is trophy trout 2, the grub jig bait. And as with the uh, previous one, I will be not using the usual methods that I would be to catch the trout because the stipulation is you need to use a jig head um, and a, uh, a grub as you can see there on my setup. Now you'll see later that I changed over to the Zeus for this and we'll talk more about that later but basically um, I used the seven centimeter grub either the white one or the yellow one and <clears throat> As you can see, I'm just forwarding the time on, and again, I'll talk about the weather later in the video too. But I used the 7cm grub, and I used uh, a combination of different jig heads, and we'll talk about that as well as we go through the video. The markers that you can see on the left there are nothing to do with trout, they are for um, blue catfish. The standard place that most people catch blue catfish from is the podium or the diving board or whatever which you get to by the canoe, we'll be going there later uh, but actually you can catch them uh, on those spots. Um, but anyway to the trout, now the first goal is here at St Croix to catch the brown trout over three kilos and um, there are about four spots. There are two very well-known spots for catching brown trout. You can see I've got a freshwater drum there and that's one of the problems with this spot. Uh, the two problems with this spot are catching walleye and, and lately it seems catching freshwater drum as well. Seems to be, uh, seems to have happened more recently. That's uh, a problem when you're trying to go for trout. So this is one of the slots um, or one of the spots and it's on the dock uh, facing inwards towards the middle of the lake. You can see the um, the buoy in front of us and in the distance is the um, pontoon or the pier for where the boats go from. So this is uh, a 14 gram on a 3 or hook and it's just a basically a stop and go and um, <clears throat> this is one of the two spots that most people would fish from for the size matters competition for trout and using a different lure again I would um, I think I would have done this in a, a fraction of the time also uh, again I'm doing this on my Microsoft account and uh, just looking at a bigger jig head there or a smaller one and on my Microsoft account again I've got a, a fraction of the kit that I've got on my uh, Steam account I did this challenge on the Steam account quite a long time ago such a long time ago that I really can't remember uh, much about what I did and how I how I managed to achieve it. Um, the real problem is that you're not using the kit that you would normally do as I say so I would normally be using a um, that same spoon, the, um, the red uh, medium spoon uh, of various sizes for catching trout here. But the one big problem with particularly this slot uh, and others is the walleye and as I say in this particular slot the uh, the drum as well and you'll see um, that that's that's quite a big problem this is another drum coming in see by the fat body um, so that's uh, one spot now there's another spot that's uh, much more uh, commonly used but the one I'm taking you to now is actually a uh, point that I discovered sort of by accident uh, the pontoon that we're heading for 
is the uh, the place that most people would fish for uh, blue catfish from. Uh, on my other account, I've got marker boys all around here. I've probably got 20 marker boys for blue catfish runs. Um, but I haven't, I haven't got any on this one, I don't think. But this is the area you would be fishing for blue catfish in all around here. Now, I have been um, farming for uh, sturgeon here as well. And the sturgeon changed uh, it's changed several times and I won't go into the details but the bottom line is I was fishing here with bottom gear uh, and farming for uh, sturgeon and using spawn sacks and quite a big hook like the one we've got on a 4.0 uh, hook and I found myself catching a lot of trout and quite big ones as well so this is the second spot that I chose to um, come to to explore and see if I could get a, a big trout or at least a three kilo plus trout with the uh, with the grub and the jig head set up and yeah it's really just a case of casting out 40 plus meters towards the boat or the houses letting it sink to the bottom and um, just do a stop and go and let it go all the way uh, because uh, one could take it any, as you see that, uh, one could take it any time. And there we go, that's a brown trout, but unfortunately, as you can see there on the display, it's 2.5 or 2.4 kilos, and we need 3. And that was the story of my early exploration for... Uh, this mission for the grub um, jig head uh, trout mission that I was catching a fair number of brown trout uh, but uh, not uh, over the three kilogram mark so the various other things that I tried the one thing that obviously you need to keep the same is you need to stick with a grub uh, as I say using other techniques I can think of at least three other uh, techniques for spinning I would prefer to be using for catching brown trout here but uh, the whole point of the mission is that it's with the grub uh, so that's another location for you guys to try if you want to um, now the other thing to mention is that you tend to get bigger trout uh, certainly in the competitions on the sunny day you can see the day there is um, the next day is a sunny day so I'm forwarding on to the sunny day and the other thing to say is uh, I think I continue to try at this point um, to uh, to get a three kilo plus trout uh, but shortly we'll be moving on to the third uh, spot and that's the probably the most common spot that most people would go for uh, when they're going for a, a big brown trout and certainly the sunny day for me certainly did seem to make the difference so once again <clears throat> apologies for the fact that this is a um, an exploratory video it's not a uh, I have edited it to some degree but it's certainly not a there we go there's another two and a half kilo brown trout so give it one more try just here the other thing that you will be uh, pestered with all the time is um, smallmouth bass and they are a real pain uh, they uh, they actually act quite like trout on the line as well. The uh, the walleye are very um, it's very easy to to spot. They have a sort of marked uh, pattern. They will dive down deep and stay down deep, and you will very rarely see a walleye come and sort of splash on the surface. So you can be sh fairly sure when you when you've got a walleye on. Uh, 
but the smallmouth bass will swim much more quickly and on the surface and splash and make you think that you've probably got a trout, although they're generally quite a lot smaller than the, the trout. So uh, that's another one that um, is, is a bit of an annoyance. But this spot certainly will um, catch you good brown trout. As I say, in a minute we'll be coming on to the uh, the next uh, position. And uh, yeah, it's just a case of um, letting it sink to the bottom and a stop and go uh, at speed three or two, depending on the weight of the jig head you've got. I've got a 25 gram on a four there, but you'll see later on I vary that quite a lot and uh, I think went up to a 48 on a 4, which is a little bit heavy. Uh, so, yeah, we're, as you can see, being quite successful in catching the brown trout. That was a 2.7, uh, which, uh, yeah, it's annoying when you're getting close, but um, but just not quite there. This is quite early in the morning and uh, you can see it's still pretty foggy. So by about 6am that fog clears and you can see the landmarks a bit, a bit more clearly. So there's a bass for good measure. As I say, you will get quite a few bass as well. I was pretty determined that I was going to try and get one at this point and probably spent too long um, trying at this um, location and to be honest I don't think I've ever um, fished here specifically for uh, trout before um, so I'm not I can't be a hundred percent sure that you get a three plus um, three kilo plus trout here but I'm pretty sure I have done in the past as I say when uh, when fishing for sturgeon there's another pesky bass. So this is the third position uh, featured in this video uh, and really what you're looking for here is to get out as far as you possibly can and to um, again let it drop to the bottom and reel in with a stop and go just off the bottom and you will eventually uh, pick up a, a brown trout. Again you're going to get walleye here, you're going to get a uh, smallmouth bass here as well um, and uh, you will occasionally get Atlantic salmon as well. Uh, this is a good fish. This is a trout and it's a brown trout and it's three kilo plus and uh, just doing nicely bringing this one in when all of a sudden it suddenly did that and I won't uh, repeat the words that were used by me at that point but um, you can well imagine uh, that was after about an hour of trying and uh, yeah I was not very happy about that uh, but I plodded on anyway 
and kept the same strategy. I changed the jig to the 42 gram jig head and you'll also notice that I've changed over to the Zeus. Now that's quite important because uh, it does give you an extra uh, with this setup 10 meters of line out uh, and you need to be about 60 meters out really for this particular spot because that's where the bigger fish are. Uh, so that's um, worth noting and that was a trophy American shad, probably the biggest shad of course on this account I would think. And yeah. You can see now the uh, marker for where the line is going to hit is a good 10 or yeah, 63 meters out so it's a good 13 meters further out and that's really what you need uh, and you're aiming to go anywhere between that buoy that you can see pretty much straight out to sea or out to, into the uh, lake and on the left hand side there's a boat you can't really see it because of the fog uh, but it's anywhere between those two points. Uh, don't worry, you can see at the moment the um, the, the spinner or the uh, lure is right on the bottom and even at three speed it can be difficult to lift it off. Don't worry if it's not actually <coughs> if it's not actually um, moving off the bottom as long as you're doing the motion and you're getting th three blobs underneath or two uh, blobs underneath you you will actually uh, catch fish like that uh, so I have found in the past doing competitions uh, <clears throat> I've experimented with it to see whether the fact that it's actually on the bottom um, really means that it's on the bottom um, or whether actually when it's graphically shown as being on the bottom as long as this is the, what I'm talking about here so I'm doing a stop and go and you'd think that would be physically on the bottom but it, it's actually it isn't and you will catch a fish like that in that position with the tail lying against the the ground so just sticking with the stop and go at three speed it's three speed until you get about 20 meters in and then you can if you want to drop down to two speed uh, but um, and again as I say it depends on the uh, weight of the lure you're using <coughs> or the uh, jig head in this case but a four four or hook uh, should be about right for catching a three kilogram plus trout maybe a little bit big you could probably go for a three but uh, I would say personally a three or a four but again this has been uh, more of a slog than it would normally do like the first mission because in each of the cases I wouldn't be using uh, the uh, tackle uh, that is stipulated for this mission I wouldn't be using a grub and a jig head I'd be using uh, more normal law so there's a 2.47 kilo trout brown trout and again you can see we're getting 63 meters out and then if you let some line off so back spool so that uh, the, the lure is dropping straight down and not coming in as it's dropping down because of the tension of the line then uh, you'll get even more distance on it effectively you'll get a longer run it's um, fairly easy to spot when you've got something like a little bass on there because uh, they come in so so quickly and the meters barely go up So, albeit a trophy, but it's a small smallie, and we're not after smallies, we're after trouts or trout. So, 
So without question, this one took longer than um, any of the others. And what I would say in summary, really, is go for a sunny day and go for either this spot or the any of the three spots, really, but probably this spot if you can get 60 plus metres out. And you should find that within about 20 minutes or half an hour on a sunny day um, at a peak time, you should get, even with this um, pesky grub that you have to use, you will get a, a brown trout, a good brown trout. So we've swapped over to the white 7 centimeter grub. Again, same, exactly the same technique. Just, um, I have noticed throughout this uh, particular mission that uh, some of the fish seem to, some of the trout seem to prefer one um, color and others the other, but uh, Generally speaking, I would go with the yellow, just because it's sort of brighter and clearer in the water, I suppose. Uh, but I used the same setup throughout the whole mission, um, apart from changing the jig head sizes. And there we go. We finally made it with a 3.38 kilo trophy brown trout. Again, as I said in my previous trout video, I think they're the best rendered fish in the game. So that gives us, that knocks off the first goal. There are four goals again in this uh, trophy trout to grub jig bait mission. And two of the remaining three can be achieved at uh, white moose. So here we are at white moose and it's a little bit unfair really because in the first, if you watch my first video of the first um, part one of this mission, the uh, Trophy Trout 1, we caught a 20 kilo trout in that, a uni lake trout, but that doesn't count towards this one because that mission wasn't valid or wasn't open uh, at, the, at the time, so you basically have to do it again. So this is largely going over uh, what we did here in the first mission. And the only difference being that we're having to use this um, seven centimeter grub. So it's a long dive down with the grub, but the same technique as before. Uh, and. Uh, sort of looking to pick it up off the bottom and achieve three bars on the stop and go if you can. There's a very annoying uh, something on the bottom there that uh, regularly hooks. It doesn't hook as regularly as it used to. Two years ago it used to pretty much hook every time and it was a real pain and often uh, you had to reel in before you could um, you could fish again. But um, it's uh, it still catches every now and again. So there's the dreaded burbot, which I learnt in a television program last night is actually very good to eat. I didn't know that, so that's something in its favour because it's a damn annoying fish on here unless you specifically want it. So the berber is one of the fish that you will catch um, along the way, unless you're very lucky and get your trout straight away, or rather your splake. But that's what I was mentioning. When we arrived here at White Moose, you've got two parts of this mission um, that, uh, that you're going to achieve here. One is to catch a splake over four kilos, and the other is to catch a trout over 
10 kilos. Now in the previous trout mission we had to catch one over 7 and we caught a 20. Um, in this one we were aiming to do exactly the same thing, catch a 20 and that obviously ticks the box for the over 10 kilo. And we'll then be moving on to San Joaquin to get the Steely, which is probably one of my um, favourite fish to go for. So again you can see with the Zeus and that weight of jig head we're getting 60 plus metres out and that does help in both the previous location St Croix and that particular spot uh, and also here. So there are two um, <coughs> positions here that I would fish for the splake from and normally on a good day uh, with the right lure you'd expect to get a uni splake probably expect to have got one by now uh, but you'd certainly expect to get one in 10-15 minutes real-time fishing uh, but again with this um, stipulation of the grub it makes things quite a lot more difficult so this is the first position as with all of the um, positions I mentioned in my videos of course it goes without saying there are other positions and other ways of catching these fish other than um, what I'm sort of going over uh, these are just the ones that I found to be the better ones so this is the other position and it's really anywhere I found from that point on the end of the tree line over to the fire that's burning just underneath the, underneath the writing on the left of the uh, screen there. So anywhere in that range you can actually see some um, sort of action on the surface there. But it's the same technique, the only difference is the lure drops to the bottom or the jig head drops to the bottom much more quickly than, uh, than at the other end of the pond. But this is a really good spot for splake and uh, yeah, you can, um, I think this might be a splake, but not quite big enough, two and a half. And I was wondering while I was doing this, um, do I ever really get a splake that's only four or five? Or is it just that there's the sort of like that one two two and a half and then it jumps up to a seven kilo the uni is about seven kilos and you get that fairly regularly and I couldn't really remember catching very many trophy splake uh, it's either uh, the little ones or nothing at all or the the uni uh, the big one which you get once and then you know you might get uh, later on the same day at a, a different high point on the bite chart but as you'll see later um, you can get one in that sort of middle ground the four or five ish kilos uh, mark and I guess really the, the whole essence of this is that it is a it's called trophy trout and you're going for trophy trout but the way they've done it is to um, gear it up based on being over a certain weight so a uni will will obviously do the job. So we're back to the uh, standard line, the, the usual line that I use for lake trout. Bear in mind at this point the good thing is that you're going for two different uh, points of the mission two different boxes you need to tick. You're going for a lake trout of 10 kilos or more or a splake of 4 kilos or more and it's exactly the same technique for both so you're you're doubling up your chances if you like of uh, ticking a box. There's that dreaded um, catch on the bottom and as you can see this time I've had to 
reel it in because it's got a shell or a something stuck to the yeah the shell. But we do get two bait coins for it, so we won't complain. So once again, as I say, I'm doing this on my Microsoft account. It's um, such a long time ago that I did it on the the other account that I can't really remember anything to help me, so I've had to work it out from sort of first principles again. But it's been good fun to do. Uh, but it's annoying when you know you can catch a fish in a fraction of the time with a different lure. Um, you certainly, I would never dream of using um, a uh, grub or any soft bait really for trout anywhere other than at Falcon uh, where the trout hunter I think stipulates that you, it's either something like crawls and creatures or it's got to be a soft bait on a jig head. So I would I would use the um, the grub then. In fact, I think that's what the setup stipulates for uh, for that competition. I think I use a smaller, probably a five centimeter grub with a, obviously a much smaller barbless jig head. Anyway, back to the job in hand here at White Moose. And uh, yeah, this is a real rambling video, so apologies for that, but um, I'm getting some good feedback from people who are saying they're enjoying that element of it and the fact that uh, there are plenty of videos out there and they're great videos um, by all sorts of people. Um, Krellick and uh, Super Dave and uh, Sabi has done some, but um, there are many YouTubers who do videos that uh, are edited versions to give you all the information you, you need. They're not edited down to make it look like they can catch fish fast, they're edited down for uh, for the benefit of the viewer so that they can get the info they need as fast as possible and they are great they really are uh, but I think there's also a place for this sort of video and as I say from some of the feedback I've been getting um, I hope you guys out there agree uh, that it's sometimes just good fun to explore the other thing is that if you're using one of those videos and it simply doesn't work um, you can be a bit stuck whereas with these sorts of uh, videos I hope to um, explore a bit more and what you might change and what you might do differently to uh, to to catch the fish so we're on the yellow grub now still on the 42 gram X series jig head on a 4 alt hook. Just checking to see whether any other grubs are available but in the end I did the whole of this uh, mission with the two 7 centimeter grubs. I think on my other account there was definitely a grub from the uh, Independence Day, the 4th of July um, mission. I'm pretty sure there was a grub from that. Maybe it's called Old Glory or something like that. Well, that's on my other account. I haven't got that one, unfortunately, on this account. In fact, I've got so little on this account that I had to go and buy these two grubs, which means that I guess I've never done Trout Hunter, the competition, on this one before. So here we go with something a little bit better, finally. As I say, the, uh, the St. Croix brown trout took the longest. Uh, this took the second longest, but it uh, did yield 
two fish that uh, ticked boxes as I say. So I think this looks very much like, yeah, I wasn't sure when this was coming in because it suddenly went, as you can see, it's taking out spools of line there. Um, wasn't sure whether it might even be a uni, uh, but hoped it would at least be 10k to uh, tick that bottom box, which you're about to see disappear. So that's a 10.4k trophy lake trout. Back up to the other end for another go for the splake. And of course we don't mind if we get a much bigger lake trout because it's uh, good money apart from anything else. So as I say the, the sort of difference here is that your lure will sink much more quickly but it's otherwise it's the uh, same technique and what was that I was just talking about the possibility of a uni just goes to show really we get set in our ways with doing things in a certain way and it's uh, sometimes interesting to try new new methods. This lake trout a couple of times decided it was gonna come towards me at great speed and I thought I was gonna lose it from a uh, line tension point of view. It's not the barbless jig head as you can see it's the X-series normal jig head again it's coming rapidly in so I had to take a vase of action and swing the rod round to maintain the tension but as you can see as we haul that one in we've already got our 10 plus but that's a nice uni lake trout 20 ish kilos very nice too but we must plot on with our mission which is to try and get that splake and I think probably this is the longest I've ever fished for a splake without getting one or fished here <coughs> in this um, way without getting a splake whether I wanted it or not. But we keep trying and hoping for the best. I think this is a little brook trout. So you get um, brook trout here. They tend to be up at this end actually. Um, normally when I'm fishing up at this end I don't fish from the podium unless it's for for this uh, purpose for the, for the lake trout. If I'm fishing this way around it tends to be from the other spot uh, across that wall that you can see fishing for pike. Um, so northern pike with uh, either bottom rods or spinners or uh, top water is quite good fun. Uh, this looks a little bit more promising. And it is the splake we're after and as I said earlier I wasn't sure whether there were many in that range but that is a 4.668 splake which is just what we're after trophy splake so we've caught a uh, trophy in fact we've caught, we've caught trophies all around so far no unis on the list and as you can see we have one fish left to catch 
which is the Steely at St. Joachim. So here we are at St. Joachim and really there are three main spots here if you haven't fished for steelhead um, before. One is off this pier and you're sort of fishing anywhere in this area you also get striped bass there as well. Secondly um, this spot up against the dam and you'll see that in a second or two and then thirdly from here fishing out to this area here um, with the latter two methods from that uh, dam, the Crichton Dam point, I would normally be top water fishing, top water lure fishing. So again, a different method to um, what we have to use for this for this uh, mission. So just shuffling the time on by one hour just to get it onto that peak. This was the one I was most confident of getting fairly quickly because I do uh, the Steelhead Showdown, it's called. Uh, it's a competition here uh, which uses topwater laws and fishes pretty much exactly as I'm going to now. But if you can imagine fishing with a topwater law, um, you're aiming to put it right up against that wall and then uh, bring it in with a fairly slow retrieve, well lots of different types of retrieve actually will work. Uh, but here we've got to use the grub, so we're sticking to the stop and go. As you can see I've still got the 42 gram jig head on there uh, from the other two locations and we'll come on to that in a, in a short while. But the first thing to say about that is that it's, um, it's quite heavy and the water is quite shallow. Uh, so in order to sort of keep it up and moving, you've got to be at um, three speed, which isn't uh, necessarily a brilliant idea. But this area below the rocks, so the right hand side of the rocks, you will get a lot of uh, steelies. You'll also get a lot of blooming ducks and geese that make a lot of noise uh, that you'll probably want to strangle within seconds of getting here. But really anywhere along that line. But I'll just show you the other spot which I mentioned when we arrived here. And that is standing right up at the top here. There's an, there's an anomaly in the game here where you can actually aim uh, inside the wall uh, so you can go right up to it and you can see here that because we're on a 42 gram jig head as I said a minute or two ago you have to reel in at speed 3 to even get it off the ground off the bottom of the water so after a couple of reel ins um, I had a think about this and thought I think this is probably moving too fast for these trout um, because normally I, as I say, I would be top water lure fishing and you can bring the walker or the popper in really quite slowly and the steelies tend to quite, to quite like it I'm not saying that they wouldn't take something at three speed but you're having, as you can see, you're having to pretty much uh, do it all the time reel in all the time and that's pretty quick. So I then decided to change to um, a smaller, lighter weight and a 3 or hook, which is no real problem. If I had had a 14 gram on a 4.0, I probably would have used it, but I don't think I had one in there. Uh, so 14. Now this is allowing me to come in at speed 2. You can see it's just allowing the run to be that much longer, and immediately that had the desired effect and got me a steely, albeit a bit smaller than uh, I would have liked. So same t technique, but you can see the by now we would have reeled in on the uh, 
on the 42 we'd have had it in and be sending it back out again whereas this is meaning that the run is lasting longer in time uh, so one more go up here as you can see as I say you can cast right into the dam itself and you're looking to get as long a distance as you can because um, even if you can reel it in slowly uh, it doesn't take very long to get it in and you want the maximum time in the water you can and as I say I would normally be using a top water law here if you've never done this um, either in the competition or just sort of free fishing then I would thoroughly recommend it. I'm a big fan of top water lure fishing of all shapes and sizes whether it's in the Everglades for all the different types of bass or uh, for muskie in uh, St. Croix or top water uh, fishing here or probably my favourite the uh, top water rodeo, rodeo in uh, Canic for things like Dolly Varden and bull trout and things like that. Uh, I think the don't know there's something about the sort of suspense of it, waiting for something to take it, come up on onto the surface and grab the line, grab the um, lure, is uh, is great. This, however, is somewhat more mundane from my point of view. But it is quite interesting. It's using really largely the same sort of technique, uh, but just with a uh, jig head and a grub on. So throughout all of these parts to these two missions, Trophy Trout 1 and 2, I've pulled on my um, sort of experience or resources or whatever in terms of what I've done in the past but just varied it by using the stipulated equipment that uh, the mission states. Rather like St. Croix, the other problem fish if you like here when you're fishing in this way is the smallmouth bass and uh, it's actually quite a good location for smallies and in one of the tournaments you fish here for the smallies um, but that's not what we're after here we are after the steely in the steelhead showdown competition you used to uh, be looking to get five trophies um, and then within the last year I guess they've introduced I think a unique and usually you can get one or possibly even two uniques in that uh, so the best five that was a bass there so I'm not too concerned about missing that but the um, the best five that you catch count um, and uh, so you're really looking for probably four sixes or f five six sevens and then one sort of over ten which is the uh, the uni uh, so if you haven't done that competition before I can highly recommend it but come and have a practice first because the competitions just get harder and harder and harder I've uh, been so tied up with doing the Christmas missions that I haven't done very many competitions but I did do the uh, perch uh, gold rush yesterday and came fifth in that which was not too bad but this is a trophy steelhead, which is, sorry, it's a steelhead, but it's over five kilos, and that's what we're looking for. So that completes the mission.
gives us the Trout Trophy 2, sorry, the Trophy Trout 2, and gives us um, the numbers you can see, 4600 there, 3 bait coins, and uh, XP of 85.20. Also gives you this cap, um, which um, gives you one extra storage slot, um, and allows a lamp to be fitted. Uh, so that's um, quite handy. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of a long one, um, but um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it'll probably be tackling another mission on the list, either on this account or the other one. And uh, yes, please like and subscribe as always, and I will see you next time.